Hey all, my name is Mark, and this is an Ariflex Zeiss 35mm B-Speed. A vintage cinema lens that's got an interesting catalog of work behind it, as well as some cool history, so needless to say, those are two ingredients I need to make a video about. Now I've also got its cousin, the Contax Carl Zeiss 35mm SLR photo lens on hand to contrast and compare just for fun. I'm standing here, you make the move. You make the move. Now in order to fully appreciate the B-Speed, we need to go back to the early 1970s. Ari was looking to develop the first set of high-speed lenses designed specifically for motion picture use. These lenses would need to take full advantage of the latest advancements in lens manufacturing, including improved multi-layer coating and optical techniques such as aspherics and floating elements. Now they would need to be sized and styled to integrate into the new Aeroflex 35BL camera platform and its lens blimp housing dimensions. The lens blimp, for those of you who don't know, is a soundproof enclosure that seals around the camera so its operation is not picked up by uh, microphones. The 35 millimeter cameras, loud. In order to work with this new camera system, the B-Speeds required a bayonet mount, which is where B-Speeds got their unofficial name from. And I say unofficial because at the time there was no standardized naming conventions attributed to these lenses simply a name eventually given to them by the filmmaking community. B-Speeds, Bayonet Speeds. Carl Zeiss, an optics company and no stranger to partnerships with camera manufacturers, stepped up to the challenge and in 1975, the B-Speeds were born. Initially a four lens set, a 25 millimeter, a 35 millimeter, a 50 millimeter, and an 85 millimeter and an ultra-wide 18mm came a year later. High-speed lenses did exist at the time, but they were dedicated SLR photo lenses that had to be modified and adapted to motion picture cameras. This required some special modifications and oftentimes compromises that were anything but practical for filmmakers. Now, the entire investment cost $350,000 in 1975, which would be about $1.8 million today. I'd say it paid off. A number of iconic films were shot in part using these lenses, but the first film to use this set kind of stands out from the rest. Not only was it the first film to use this newly minted lens set, the setting and shooting demands for the film did a great job of really demonstrating their value. Shooting in New York City at night, especially with these driving shots, the production didn't have the ability to shut down entire blocks and set up massive lighting rigs so the film running through the camera could expose the images, so these high-speed lenses came in very handy. DP Michael Chapman shot some of these sequences documentary style, and the only lighting you're seeing is from the practical light sources of the streetlights, traffic lights, and neon signs. Now, the lens's ability to control flares when shooting directly into strong light sources was also on full display. And while most people wouldn't recognize the difference, to the filmmakers controlling the image, it's a big deal. Now, the compact, fast lenses paired with the portable Aeroflex 35BL camera allowed for some interesting mounting solutions and compositions on the taxi cab itself, which really are iconic in their own right. Many of these shots are an actual, authentic glimpse into the streets of New York City in 1975, untouched by meticulous set decoration and lighting rigs, and it just so happens the film was being shot during the city's worst garbage strike on record, which added perfectly to the themes of the film. So this is what an Ariflex Zeiss B-Speed can look like today, slightly modified from its original form to gain better functionality with the quickly changing landscape of filmmaking, the original bayonet mount has been replaced with a PL mount mod, similar to how this Contax Carl Zeiss CY mount has been modded to Canon's EF for updated functionality. Now, these focus gears were also added on after the fact. Instead of focus gears, B-Speeds had these metal focusing tabs or wings that allowed for articulating the focus ring when the camera and lens were enclosed in the sound blimp. Once those sound blimps went away, so were the need for those metal wings. Because of these mods, knowing if a lens is a true B-speed or not can be a little tricky at first glance. But the one defining characteristic of these lenses are its unique aperture blade pattern. 
Now using a nine blade diaphragm design, when stopped down, the blades form a distinct triangular shape. That's unmistakable. It's not exactly a straight edge triangle, more of a rounded shaped triangle, and it's only visible when the lens is stopped down. The design had a purpose. It gives the lenses a more gentle focus roll off. Now it's not really fair to compare, but since I've got both these lenses, let's quickly look at some of the similarities and differences between the Contax Carl Zeiss 35 f1.4 and the Ariflex Zeiss 35 mm B-Speed. Both lenses were made around the same time, mid 1970s, and are approximately the same size and weight. Both lenses are made in West Germany and are optically coated with Zeiss's T-Star coatings and have a 65mm front ring diameter. Now, each lens has a very impressive close focus, but the contact Zeiss comes in at just under 12 inches and the Ariflex Zeiss at 15 inches. Now, both lenses have declicked aperture, although the contacts has been modded that way, where the B-Speed's aperture is standardized this way. Both lenses also have a unique aperture blade pattern when stopped down. Although it's not the same shape, it is unique, and that's pretty much where the similarities end. Unless you count for the fact that both lenses have been modified beyond their original form factor, but that probably shouldn't count. I mean, of course these lenses are different. The Contax Carl Zeiss lens was made as a dedicated SLR photography lens, and the very essence of the B-Speed was designed from the ground up to be a fast, dedicated motion picture lens. The Contax Zeiss lens is a dedicated full-frame lens, meant to cover the Leica 35mm frame, while the B-Speed was designed to cover the motion picture 35mm frame. When mounted to a full-frame camera, you can see this lens doesn't resolve across the entire frame. Cropping into S35 mode resolves this issue. The focus throw on the Contax lens is about 90 degrees, and on the B-Speed, just under 180 degrees. Now I mentioned earlier, both lenses produce an interesting bokeh shape when stopped down. Now the Contax lens, which is the AEG version, has a saw blade or ninja star pattern between F2 to F4. And the B-Speed displays the iconic triangular shape when stopped down. Breathing on both lenses is minimal, especially on the B-Speed. The flares are very nice thanks to those vintage coatings, and shooting wide open does result in a beautiful, flattering look with a slight glow to the highlights. Stopping down, the lens looks much sharper and has more contrast. Now, B-Speeds are still around today, although it's getting harder to find full sets. If you do, they command a bit of a hefty price tag. Now, as a testament to their quality though, they are still being used here and there on modern productions, and TLS does offer a full housing for them. Now, HBO's Euphoria has had a few shots captured with these lenses, and I think Greg Frazier snuck a shot or two with the 85 in Dune. The only reason I even noticed it was the very distinct triangular bokeh pattern used during the premonition dream sequence. Now, B-Speeds were the beginning of a wonderful relationship between Ariflex and Zeiss, and as the motion picture technology continued to develop over the decades that followed, they would continue to adapt their line to suit the changing landscape. Mark 1s, Mark 2s, Mark 3s, Ultra Primes, Master Primes, each iteration building off the foundation of the last and adapting to the changing landscape. Now, it's pretty cool to see how it compares to the Contax Carl Zeiss 35mm f1.4. Even if they really shouldn't be compared head-to-head, -head, it was still fun to take a look. With the Arri Alexa 35 and its Super 35mm sensor camera drop recently, there will likely be a continued demand for those old workhorse Super 35mm lenses like these for certain projects. You know, if you can rent them out over the course of time, it might be a good investment. Now, I got this lens over a year ago and I have been putting it to good use ever since. These lenses don't just sit on a shelf. But years ago, I did say this whole vintage lens venture was a massive rabbit hole. And here I am. All right, guys, well, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you all letting me gush about this stuff. I hope you liked it. B speeds, baby, down the rabbit hole. Um, that's it. We'll see you guys next time.